Hello and welcome to Higgsy Studio. In this video I'm going to show you how to make this little hanging decoration. Um, it, you would see more effect if it's hanging up with the light shining through it um, because this is acetate uh, and alcohol ink which I'll show you in a minute. But this is the dye that we're, oh if I can pick it up, this is the dye that we're going to use. This is um, one of the Paper Panda uh, collection from Creative Expressions um, and this one's called Winter Stag. The the little leaves on the sort of the tree slash antlers um, are kind of holly, so it is it's kind of um, more supposed to be more for Christmas. But I don't think you really notice that. Uh, so I think you know it's kind of an all year round one. This it's beautiful dye. Um, it comes in two parts, so you get the uh, the inner part that just cuts in. And then if you want to cut it, you can cut it there. However, that said, um, if you've got, like I have, large, and a lot of people do have larger nesting circle dies, then um, you can use it, which is what I've done here. So I've used it with a, a much larger die to get a wider border so that I can sandwich the, um, the acetate between. If you don't have large circle dies, you could always just do this on a square. So cut a square and then cut a smaller square of the acetate. Um, it would still work uh, just as well. Okay, so we're going to put that one away. Now, um, I will do, what I think I'll do is I'll do the alcohol ink first so that it can dry. That said, it's a very warm day, so it shouldn't really take much, uh, much to get this dry today. Um, <laughs> that would be... Now acetate is clear, so somewhere my little bit of acetate has gone for a wonder. It's here somewhere, because, oh there it is, see, phew, it doesn't take much to lose a piece of clear acetate. Um, okay, so I have already cut um, my uh, acetate to shape. You could, if you wanted to, do a larger sheet and cut the piece you want, but personally I felt, um, use this now the colors i've used um uh, is this one this is one of the old adirondack lights um water, uh, shell pinks it's a really pale kind of pinky color I'll bring that down you can see that so that's the shell pink then i've used this one this is a newer one um it's one of the alcohol pearl uh, and it has a you can hear it clunking around in there and you, you need to do that to agitate the pearl that's in there. And then I've got this mixative one, which is snow cap, which I think is just lovely. Um, this one also says you should shake vigorously until the mixing ball rattles and the pigments mix. However, I have yet to be able to get anything to rattle in this bottle. However, it still comes out beautiful. Um, if I show you, this one I did a lot more um, of the white on. But let me put it against the black so you can see the white. So the white really does stand out, and that's without getting the, the ball to mix. Um, I did less of the white on this one, um, but you can still see um, it, it's on there. So, um, alcohol inks, uh, you can just make sure I've not lost my bit of acetate. No, it's there. Give me kittens about that. Um, <clears throat> you can just squirt them on, um, you know use there's all sorts of little accessory things that um tim holtz makes to go with the, the distress inks i'm this is the one i've used i'm going to use a new one but this is how i always uh, tend to use them these this is a uh we see these quite a lot with uh, the sponge applicators for inks and you can get round ones as well but um this is a really old one i've had um for a very long time but you get the um the felt pieces to go on here they come in a massive pack so they last ages and to be quite honest with you you can reuse these you know just because um uh you know just because i'm putting a new one on i could use that old one so they can be used uh several times so um so the way i have always used um alcohol inks this is 
to just put some dots on. Now you can see this this is a very old, it's got a bit crusty in my bottle. This is one I've had a very long time, but I do like this colour. It's just a nice light. And I'm putting quite a lot on because I want it to be light, not dark, because this this villainous one is quite a strong dark pigment and we don't want that to take over so I'm putting that on as well I'm just literally putting dots on that's a very warm day today so I need to work reasonably quickly I can always add more um but uh I am with this one I am kind of just skin it on you can see it kind of overrides everything else. Okay, so I have got it um, on a piece of card purely because I don't want to spend the time um, cleaning off the uh, my mat. It will come off if you've got alcohol blending solution. It will come off no problem whatsoever. So as you can see, I've got uh, all over. If I go back in, it gives you slightly different effects. I can twist it like that, I don't really want to, so I'm going to go back in and, and splodge that. So I'm going over it a little bit, there we go. Um, and that's all you need to do. Now I'm, I'm holding it up a little bit because I'm looking for any bits where I haven't got ink because I kind of want most of it covered. And obviously with a piece of white paper it's not always easy to see, so I'm just trying to make sure I've got as much it does, I'm not too bothered about the odd little bit, um, but it is drying very fast. I'm just going to put that down. Okay, so that's done. I'm going to put that to the side. Now, if I, if I, I might actually do this just to show. Um, I'm going to go back in with a bit more of the white. I'm just going to put the same same thing on, just a little bit more of the white. You can see how it's, oops, it's a bit tacky at the moment. You can see that it's just adding a bit more to it. It's, it makes it a bit lighter, if you like. There we go. Okay, what's that down there? Uh, so I'm going to put that to the side now for that to dry while we sort out the die cutting. Now, quite often, in fact, nearly all the time, when I am prepping for a demo like this and I need two or something, I tend to do it one in advance. I haven't today and there is a reason. Now, I am placing this die as well as I can in the middle of this one. Um, if I did this now and then, uh, or if I'd done this before and I came to do another one now, with the best will in the world, I am not going to get it in the same place. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is put quite a bit of tape. You can see I'm kind of overlapping the two dies with the tape so that they become to get one die if you like. But once I've cut the first one I can I've then got this in the all in the right place to carefully lift out with the two dies still together to put on here. And then I know that they are going to be this this bit here is going to be the same on both okay so just a little sort of tip um because otherwise you'll end up trying to line the two up because i've got one at the front and one at the back oh look i've got a little, little piece of red liner tape that decided to get uh get itself caught in the that's that's what i, I used the red liner to attach the ribbon i'll show you that in a bit so um i'm using one shim here one piece of card not the um not the magnet i'm hoping that will do because i don't want to buckle the card with too much pressure 
that one's gone through and we'll have a look in a sec to see sounds like it's properly i'm just going to flip it over and look at it from no okay so i can see that we've cut here we've cut a bit here so i'm going to turn it around that way and let's try and cut there again i'm not um you see i've got a very banana shaped board um, I'm not putting, at the moment, I'm not adding in extra pressure. Just rotated it. Let's have a look and see. There. Okay, now I'm going to do a little bit of a test before I um, remove it from the dry. I'm just going to try to poke some of them out. See, that's they are coming out. Let's just see. That one doesn't want to. So some of them are, but there's a few not wanting to. So what I'm going to do is just see how much I can get out. What I don't want to do is take it out if I'm going to suddenly come across pieces that don't want to come out. Um, yeah, that one's not okay. Now, if you there's another video I've got with this die, you'll see that it cuts perfectly. It's not the die, it's I have dead spaces on my board because of its lovely banana shape. So, we're going to have another go through for me personally. I would rather do this, um, and uh then spend what a little while trying to poke it all out and you know but you know it's personal choice I, i'm quite happy to put them through several times just to uh, avoid having to get new plates right now that feels it feels like it's stuck in which means it's probably cut really well now and I can see that that has cut so much better. So if I stop, let you see the bits are just literally popping out now. Excellent. Okay, Koki. So I'm going to continue to poke out the bits. Um, uh, even like I'm just pushing my poke tool through the um the tape. It's not going to cause anything to move. It just means it's cleaner before I uh. I and take um remove the uh the dies. These bits are not gonna come out um with a roller because they're being held in by where I put the tape. So trying to get out as much as I can before I pinch and remove the die. Bits there. Okay, so I'm going to loosen the tape from around the edge. Okay, okay, so you've still got these two dies in exactly the same position. So now I'm just going to come this way and gently ease this out from the die. Now I need to make sure the die is clean before we try again. So that's why I did a lot of the popping out before I took anything else because it's more stable while that dies in. It's not always possible to get everything out. So just carefully now going around, popping out. Taking out all the, the last bit. Let's have a look at this side. We've got a little bit here. And then we've got a bit here. Okay, so I can now place this down onto my second piece of card and be quite comfortable knowing that they are in the same position 
as when I cut this one. But it is worth um, just taking that little bit of time to do that. So now I'm going to fiddle around with the dead spots on my board. So I'm going to put this here. Um, and like so. And then, oh, let's see uh, if we can get this through in the pocket partially. And all I like to do, I'm just going to poke out. Yeah, sound like a nice cutting sound there. Okay, okay, it looks like we've got that thing. So let's have a look. Right, last time, let's check. Okay, so that first pass is better than the first pass from the last time. Look. I just want to be on the safe side. I'm going to run it through one more time. I can feel like that bit not quite wanting to to give up. So I'll go back slightly that way. Um, there. Put that back through. Well, that's going to feel too much less. Do the same as we did before, just give it a good old test out that this is just going to pop out. I think the positioning of, um, of it on my plate was better this time. I think you know, you get to know your machine. This machine that I use when we're videoing is different in its pressure to the Gemini I use at home so it's kind of like knowing machine your machine and this I know that these plates have dead spots purely because they've they've got bent over time with use usage so Okay, um, these bits of text are still fairly clean. We can use them again because we use quite a lot of tape in order to be able to achieve, look, in order to be able to, to achieve what we were doing. So, um, if you can recycle it, all the better. Oh my God, it's pulled itself over. Those bits and then we can put that. Okay, and then these out of the die. Um, brush it over to get rid of any bit. I've still got some tape on, which probably means a few bits are not going to come out as easy. Last bits out of the die. Oh, stuck there. There are lots and lots of little little bits that get cut out on this die. So make sure you uh, check your die is clean before you cut again, because otherwise the pressure won't work quite as well in those particular places right okay so let's get rid of the oh, first of all let's just check if we've got any bits in here i did notice one more in this bit that i needed to just pop out have got any in here 
need Okay. Rubbish. Lake fill. Okay, now, so what this means now is that these will fit over. The only bits that you might have to, to sort of fiddle with are these little bits at the end that have a mind of their own because they, they will bend and they're movable. But you can see that everything fits on top of each other. You're not going to have any sort of gaping bit. Okay, so what we want to do now is, um, as I said, close a bit. Okay, what we're going to do is, um, we're going to sandwich the the um the acetate between. Okay, so let me it's hard to, to show you with, with the lights. You can kind of just about make it out. Probably like that. Okay, so I mean that said, the um the pearl and the mixture do make this more opaque than perhaps you just if you weren't using your, your ordinary um, alcohol inks. Right, okay, so what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and get this stuck in. Yeah. Hold on, the glue's, glue's working. Now, I made, made a, an error of judgment there. In terms of, I really should have put the glue on the little bits first, so that that, because this is tacky glue, so even if it slightly dries, it will still be tacky. Whereas the acrylic glue, well, once it's dry, it's dry. So what I'm doing is I'm putting uh, glue onto these little leaf parts and some of the branches. Yes, we're gluing it onto acetate, but it won't show because the other um, the other piece will be glued right directly on top, so the glue will not be visible. I'm working quite quickly because it's very warm today. I'm gluing all sorts, just drying so quickly. Okay, so I'm trying to make sure you've got as much on. And it's just Legs of the stem leg. Enough one, I think. Now what I'm I'm putting it. Um, this side has doesn't have the alcohol ink. This is the side that has the alcohol ink. So I am putting it whoop, down that way. So that's on. And now. When you're doing this, you do need to hold it to the light. So I'm afraid I'm having to sort of hold it that way, which is not easy for you to see. Because what I want is when it's it's um, hanging, you don't see any sort of shadow. So first thing I'm going to do is put the glue on this one. I'm using my fine tip, my fine tip applicator. To make sure that we get some contact between this and the acetate. Like so. I've gone very quiet, just concentrating on glue. It's a very, very detailed dyes. It's just all well, these crisscrossing um, antler stroke branches. I mean, it's beautiful. Uh, terrifying how, you know, I would, wouldn't even want to attempt to cut this by um, hand, which is what. Um, 
paper panda originally did all cut with a by hand with a craft knife. Lots of control and patience and a very, very sharp knife. Okay, so now I'm going round and put a line of glue fairly close to that inner circle and then a line around and then just going in, filling in. Oh dear. You can see some of this is already drying. So now a case and please uh, excuse me I need to hold it up. Now I found it easier to start with the stag because that's your big piece and if you get your stag in the right place everything else just falls into place. Okay when you hold it up to the light you don't see a shadow of the the stag on the other side and the ah, the acetate is caught between and I went because ah, I've forgotten to put the you might just get away with it I've forgotten to put the ribbon on so let's um what I might do rather than trying to get red liner tape in I might I might just cheat a little bit and put some 3D glue gel in in there and then what you don't want it you don't want to show you've probably got too much ribbon there you can put nice squeezed out and that's fine because I can wipe that off but as a quick cheat, I don't think that's too bad. Get away from the glue, get squeezed out. There we go. Phew, just about saved that. So, so you need to, unlike me, remember to um to put the the ribbon in before you sandwich the two together and that then you know right this one i was able to get it a bit closer together but it it will still absolutely work okay so let's just have a quick recap on what we used here so the die the die that's done the, the all the work uh is this one this uh paper panda collection die called winter stag um I have got another video on the channel showing you how to make a lovely box, um, a box framed one of these, perfect for sort of a gift. Um, and then uh, for a colour, we used a um, combination of shell pink, which is just a basic alcohol ink, um, one of the pearls called Villainous, and a mixative called Snowcat on to acetate um okay like i said have a look on the uh the channel there are lots of other videos on there including another one for this and other panda uh, paper panda dies thank you for joining me mm -hmm.